Hello everyone, welcome to Beginner C++. This is going to be lesson number one, um, and we're going to go over uh, a few things today. Uh, so the first things first, uh, we're going to be using Microsoft Visual Studio Express 2013 for Windows Desktop. Uh, that is a program where you can find a link down in the description. Um, other uh, IDEs will work. Uh, if you want to use NetBeans or CodeBlocks or... Yeah, that's really about it. I wouldn't suggest using Eclipse or Bloodshed. Um, but those are all options. Uh, but there will be some things that we're going to cover in here uh, that will be specific to Visual Studio. So if you have the option, do get this. So to begin, we're going to come up to the top, go to New Project going to select from templates Visual C++ on the left, Windows 32 console application up here at the top, and we're going to name it Lesson-1, and we're going to hit OK. It's going to come up with uh, an application wizard screen. We're going to hit Next. We're going to uncheck pre-compiled header. Um, you can actually uncheck that too. Um, we don't need SDL checks as there won't be an SDL. And it gives us this. Now the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to delete that uh, stdafx.h and the lines above it. So um, I'm going to jump in and kind of do some code and you know I'm, while I code I'm going to explain what it is that I'm doing. Um, so the first line that you're going to learn is include, and we're going to include something called IO stream. There we are. Um, this is basically uh, a library. Uh, whenever you see this include, we're generally doing a, a library or a header, which we'll get to later. Um, and IOStream specifically is a library that is used to input, uh, or well, allow user input and to output uh, strings and variables and things like that. So the second line is going to be using namespace std. And I'm going to actually comment this line out. So those two slashes means that that's not going to happen yet. And I just want to show you guys, uh, we're actually going to make this a little easier. And we're, instead of int t main, it's just going to be int main, just like that. Um, I like putting this bracket on the same line. Um, that's personal taste, and we'll get into that in uh, a few different points throughout our series. So to do the, uh, the very standard hello world example, what you would do is you would type std two colons c out two less thans uppercase hello uppercase world and then we uh, toss in a semicolon at the end of the line um, up here at the top there's going to be something that says local windows debugger and when we give this run it's going to run and close almost instantly so one of the things that we put in specifically uh, for uh, Visual Studio is this command, system pause, pause is all uppercase letters uh, in quotation marks. And so when we do that, now you see it says, hello world, press any key to continue. You press any key and it closes. So since we don't like that uh, being on the same sort of line, uh, as the press any key to continue. We can now rerun this with that std and l, and now it's hello world and press any key to continue on its own line. So and l means end line. So um, I'm going to uncomment this using namespace std. You can see that um, when I typed stdc out and std and l, uh, those did something. So what this std colon colon means is that these are functions that exist in what's known as the standard namespace, uh, or in this case, the standard library of C++. So we're going to 
get rid of those and uncomment this. And so now any command we enter has sort of an invisible std colon colon before it. Uh, and that saves us an awful lot of typing. Um, so, all right, there's that. Now, in C++, uh, you're breaking programs down into what are called statements. Statement is any single line like this where you have uh, one sort of thing happening, and at the end of it, there's this semicolon, and it's nice, and it's easy, and it's wrapped up. Um, as you can see, this line of int main, this is where all the magic happens, uh, has a bracket here. So that means it's not a statement. It's actually called a function. Um, this return zero at the end is... We'll get more into what return means uh, when we get into functions later on. But for now, just know that this return zero, when the program exits, it gives the operating system the number zero to tell it that everything went okay. So I hope you guys are comfortable with this because I want to move past this very quickly. Um, so we're going to talk about variables. And in this uh, episode, we're going to talk about six different types of variables. Um, again, I just want to let you guys know, uh, comment is anything with two lines uh, at, or two slashes at the beginning of a line. And your text will show up in green. Comments are not included in programs. They, they don't show up anywhere, they don't do anything, they don't compile, and they won't cause errors if they're done right. So, variables. Um, I'm going to introduce int and long. I'm going to introduce uh, double and float. And I'm going to also introduce string and care. Now, the ones that I actually use here are int, double, and string. Um, float, long, and care. Well, long is actually used a lot, but uh, care and float are typically used less nowadays. Um, the reasons those exist are for single... Let me explain this out fully. An int is an integer. So the way to declare a variable is like this. Okay, so this is what's known as a, a variable. It starts with a type. Whenever you're declaring a variable, you're going to have a type the name of the variable, in this case, my number. This part's optional, uh, the equal sign zero. So the equal sign, um, we'll be calling it, well, I'll probably be calling it uh, an equal sign for the majority of the time, but some people refer to it as a assignment operator, or um, sometimes compilers refer to it as a left-hand assignment operator meaning that whatever is to the left of the equal sign is being assigned the value on the right of the equal sign. So in this case, we're making an integer called my number and giving it the value of 0. We can give it the value of 5 if we'd like. So to output that, we simply type C out my number, just like that. And that does not go in quotation marks. So, all right, if we do that, we're going to get a, a 5 right here before the press any key to continue. I'm just going to, uh, to do a C out end L right here, so that way I don't have to worry about it cramping my, uh, my style. Okay, so for the sake of brevity. Uh, long is the same thing as an int, except it can store more numbers. Um, the actual maximum value of int is really high. Um, it varies based on operating system, operating system version, uh, and I think addressable memory. Don't quote me on any of those because 
when I was learning C++, they said that the max int was 32,700, or, yeah, 32,768. So that's clearly wrong because I can set it equal to 75,000 and it runs just fine. So don't, you know, if, if you are dealing with big numbers, use a long, otherwise an int's fine. Next up is double which are declared the exact same way. And we'll make that equal to 5.555. Now, remember, ints are integers. These are whole numbers only. Whereas doubles, they can handle uh, any, uh, any decimal numbers that you might need. So in this case, if I do C out my double, we're going to, yeah, let's do another end all. There we go. You know, we get the uh, 75,000 and the 5.555. Cool. So again, I'm not going to waste too much time explaining what float is. Float is simply a smaller double. Double holds twice as many numbers as float. Um, again, that's what it was when I learned. That could be different now um, and probably relates a lot to what operating system you use. Lastly is string. And string is uh, words in general. So we're going to make a string called str, and we're going to say hello world in that string. And then we're going to get rid of where it says hello world there, and type in str this time with no quotes around it. And I don't know why that's... I don't know why that's complaining. It should be okay. It's not okay. Include string. Sometimes C++ can be a little bit weird about uh, what it wants you to include. So I included the string library and it let me use that. So, all right, let me move this down underneath our comment. And I want to, uh, I just want to kind of show one other quick thing. You know, we could have put this all into one C out if we'd really wanted to. But what I'd rather show you guys is this. So this is one of the things that I like to do to, uh, to debug programs. So if I do like, oops. So if I do like this, number equals and last one is going to be my double all right so we give this a run and now it outputs you know string equals hello world my number equals that my double equals that press any key to continue um, and so that should just about wrap up variables the only other thing I want to show is, uh, uh, you know what, I'll actually, nah, whatever, I'll do it here. I don't care if this one's a little long. It's the first one. You guys have all the stamina in the world. So, um, let's do a quick uh, CN. So let's do, uh, let's create an int, name it my value, or actually let's name it user value equals zero, C out, please enter a value. Then we're going to C in for user value. And then we'll come down here and C out user value. And I guess to stay with what we're doing here, we'll do uh, like that. 
Okay, so enter a value. I'm going to enter 15. And as you can see, user value is now set to 15. So there is one other thing I just wanted to mention. It's a uh, quick sort of way of keeping straight which way these uh, greater than, less than signs uh, work. So when you want to output something, you're going to put it right here. And these arrows are going to point to the output, right? With input, or CN, you want the arrows pointing to where you want that stuff to be stored. That's, uh, that's always the way that I was sort of taught it, and that kind of, uh, that kind of stuck out for me. Uh, there are some definite issues with CN, especially if you're going to be using strings. So we're going to cover that in a lot more depth in future uh, lessons. But for now, we're pushing 16 minutes, so I'm going to wrap it up here. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to comment um, either here on the YouTube video or you can comment. Uh, there will be a specific uh, forum thread for this back on the Beginner CPP forums. And you guys have some homework to do. And your homework is going to be write, oh my god, I can't type, a program that allows a user to enter three numbers, store the sum of them in a variable called total, then output the total. Now, if you want to, uh, to go for some extra credit, rewrite that same program without the total variable. All right, guys, good luck. Like, comment, subscribe, share, and I'll see you next time.